We just learned how to establish a media connection between two hosts. By the end of this section, you will be able to handle Google App Engine Channels communication. Upon completing this video, you will discover how to handle media handshaking through messages exchanged via Google App Engine Channels. With the GAE Channel API, we'll see how to correctly develop the first two servlet classes that are required for the backend project. Open Eclipse IDE and create a brand new App Engine project. Deselect the checkbox for creating sample code. We won't need it. We'll start developing the services using Channel and Presence API for interconnecting remote clients. Presence is a special feature of the GAE Channel API. The server will be triggered when a client connects to or disconnects from a channel. Then we'll create our first servlet class to handle channel disconnections initiated by clients. We'll choose a superclass not the standard java.lang.object, because this class will be reachable from the web through our servlet container. We'll declare it as superclass javax.servlet.http.http servlet. Name it disconnect page. We need this class to handle client disconnections as already discussed. After that, we can start overriding the default doPost method, removing the invocation of the superclass method. We have to override it because we're supposed to develop a client, in our case, in the JavaScript language, that will connect to this backend by HTTP POST messages. Now, let's start using some channel API methods. However, First, we have to remember about logging, so we have to declare a static final variable in which we'll place the reference of the logger instance. After that, just type in log messages and what we'll expect to do. Received channel disconnect. Now, as you might have learned from previous sections, the Google App Engine channel is mostly used in conjunction with HTTP POST messages. Basically, the client sends messages via HTTP POST and receives them through the GAE channel. So why do we need a service that intercepts the disconnection messages from clients? The answer is simple. We need it because the server that handles the intercommunication between two clients must know when a client disconnects so that the other client is ready to talk with someone else. We invoke the static method getChannelService of the class ChannelService factory to get an instance of channel service. After that, We'll use this instance to parse the presence contained in the HTTP POST request. We simply call the parse presence methods HTTP servlet request object. Finally, we print the client ID contained in the request. We have to stop here for the moment, because in order to move on to the development process of this class, we have to define the data structure and respective classes first. By the way, we can start developing the other class that will use the GAE channel API. Create a new class extending the superclass HTTP servlet and name it message page. After that, override again the doPost method removing the invocation of superclass method. Again, we have to get an instance of the logger service and store it inside a static variable. Directly inside the overridden method, we will look for the global identifier for the client's current communication. This ID will be the same for both users, so to better understand, we can name it room key. Then, we have to parse the request's input stream with a custom method that we'll define later. This method We'll take all the content from an input stream and place it inside a string. After that, we can finally print the received message into the log. Finally, we can develop the custom method for parsing the input stream of the received HTTP POST request. So, create a new private method named readBody. Check if the input stream is null 
and creates a new buffered reader, giving that input stream as argument. After that, we can iterate reading the input stream, line by line, and concatenating all the lines into a single string. After developing the first classes that will use the presence feature included in the channel API, we have to declare to the platform that we want to use custom features such as channel presence, which is disabled by default. For that reason, open the appengine-web.xml file placed under the web-inf directory under the WAR folder. As you can see, the file acts like a configuration file for the application. It contains the app ID as first parameter and the version. Through this file, we can declare whether our app is developed with the thread-safe methodology. In that case, the platform will send multiple requests at a time to the defined servlet. It also defines the logging properties file and some other useful options. At the end of the file, we can thus declare the disabled feature that we want to use. The channel presence option. To do so, open an XML tag named inbound-services. Then open a new tag named service and write the name of the service, in this case, channel underscore presence. Now close both the tags. We're done. Now the platform knows which service we need to correctly execute our application. In the next video, we'll see how to create a dynamic ID and manage unique session identifiers to handle intercommunication between users.